Today we're going to give you some quick tips to crush the campaign in Infinite Galaxy. So if you were looking for the guidance to next level your gameplay, here we go. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, a sponsor content creator for Infinite Galaxy. And today we're going to share some things that I honestly was kind of surprised to see for the campaign in this game. If you like Infinite Galaxy guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, then hey, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Infinite Galaxy videos. A couple things we need to talk about that I just didn't know. First of all, if you're going to go do the campaign, make sure that you juice up whatever flagship you're going to use. So you can see before I pick the mission here, I'm obviously selecting my flagship, which means if I have more levels that I can apply to the flagship, I should level it up. If I have some gear optimizations I can make, for instance, I just crafted an epic piece of gear, a few more blues, then yeah, consider doing that before you go through this game mode, and it will make a huge, huge difference. But there's more, and these things were very unexpected for me. The first thing I didn't expect is that when you unlock a new tier of warship, you start using that new tier of warship in the campaign. At least it seems that way, and we can go test that right now. So you can see what a level 7 destroyer is going to look like, a tier 7. Right now, I'm using a tier 6. So I can go speed up the research for my T7, and you'll be able to see in real time that the look is going to change. So we'll smash into the campaign, we'll go pick a mission. I'm not going to run this all the way to the end, I'm just going to show you what the units look like, and then we'll get to the next mission, okay? So we move forward here, you can see... Here's what the destroyers look like that came with the mission. However, once I accumulate enough energy to summon some destroyers of my own, we'll see exactly what they look like, and then we'll do this again and go get the new version of the destroyers. And I'm pretty sure it's going to look different, but hey, let's figure this out together, all right? Okay, we're now moments away from summoning those destroyers. We almost have enough energy to get that done. We're way up front with our Artemis, tanking the damage. I think that's a part of the strategy. And this is a Kraken-class destroyer level three. Let's bring that in. Boom. You can see what they look like here. They look like that style of design that's kind of fat, and it's got the tube thingies in the center. I don't know. It's kind of kind of an interesting look and feel here. But okay, let's, let's just go with that for now. We'll zoom back out. They all got kind of wrecked pretty quickly here. We're going to run a mission again after we go speed up the tech for the next tier, and, ooh, hey, ooh, let's bring in my Chimera class frigate level one. Boom. Oh, yeah. Get these guys in the fight. Knock this out. Dude, we are, we are obliterating this. Dude, these upgrades I made recently to my flagship is doing so, so well. Oh, I'm about to, I'm about to eat it up front here, but with the Artemis, this is a little bit of my goal to take a lot of damage, absorbing it, because I can regenerate my shield using my abilities here, which, I mean, heck, I'm not even going to need to. My ships are doing so darn well, which I would argue is because we've been teching up a whole heck of a lot. I can refresh my shields a little bit here. We're doing really great, and uh, I'll show you. Ooh, man, bring more of these in. I'll show you when I upgrade these warships in just a second. Okay, here we go. We go to our research. Here's the research we're looking for. Wyvern Class Destroyer Level 1. We're going to speed this up. There we go. Easy. Done. Use a little bit of Corium to round that out. I'll queue up some other research later, although obviously you should have research going constantly. So as a reminder, this is what that Wyvern class destroyer is going to look like. And here is the Chimera class 1 frigate. Let's make our way back in to the campaign. We'll pick a mission and we'll show you that it upgraded. Okay, we're about to be able to reinforce here, bringing in the unit that we want. Woo! Good thing the rest of our reinforcements arrived just in time. There we go. We've got enough energy and Wyvern class destroyer. There it is. Proof positive that, in fact, the ship you get, and look, that does look different. The ship you get is related to what you've got. So that is a huge tip for advancing in this game mode is that the reinforcements you'll be getting will tier up with your tier of warship. So you'll have a much easier time and you should do some new attempts on the campaign Every time you unlock a new warship, of course, there is more that you can do. Let's jump to that now. The next tip I've got for you is to go in and swap out your crew. One optimization that I didn't make, that I could make, is to go in and say, take out Trek Wagner, who's really just here for gathering, 
and swap in someone that is improving my flagship. For instance, here's flagship armor and shields by a very substantial amount. You could swap around your crew to get some extra damage right before you go into this game mode. And I imagine that that is going to influence your ability to perform well in this game mode. In fact, if we were to get a look here, if we go to the flagship information and I tap change flagship, we can see the armor and shielding of our flagship. We'll just look at the armor for now, since we know we're going to go and upgrade that in a second. It's 582 and 387. If I go now and swap the crew, okay, actually a surprise. I really thought this was going to work, and I didn't think I had a way to prove it. But now I do have a way to prove it, and I don't think it works, which is kind of weird. 582 and 387 is still the armor listing for my flagship. So maybe somebody knows what's going on there, but it seems like swapping out my crew members actually didn't influence my warship armor and shields. Let me know down below in the comments. I would have thought for sure that would have the effect, but let me go and try one or two more swaps. Okay, this time we're going to swap in 14% more damage for the flagship. Assign it. Does that do anything? We go in here. Smash change flagship. 939 attack bonus. Yeah, okay. No, it does not look like, at least in this stat sheet, that changing out the crew is doing anything. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Okay, good to know. Good to know that doesn't work. Also worth mentioning in this game mode, as I'm looking now, I, I know that there are the flagship skills that you get that are a little bit different, but the skills it lists for your flagship, with the exception of the primary skill of your flagship, the, the damage dealing ability on your flagship, all of these are different. Like it doesn't list like, oh, the, you know, the Artemis is really good with frigates here. That's not what it says. So this is actually kind of interesting. For instance, these gathering ships have obviously non-gathering abilities. Select a circular area to deal damage to targets. I mean, it could be that perhaps some of the gathering ships are better and you might want to test it if you leveled up your gathering ships. This is something that I will have to come back and revisit at a later time. But it does look like the skill profile is almost completely different in this game mode which is kind of cool. Like, you might look at the Peleus and think, I don't know, is that a ship I would use? But it's got some level 5 abilities here because we've run around and for free gotten tons of these blueprints battling the strongholds. I don't know, it is conceivable that this ship will be worth a try. I will have to test that out and get back to you. Now, I don't know how much I need to emphasize the importance of knocking out your campaign every single day, but you can see just by taking two missions during this video from two out of three ticks of completion all the way up to the max I guess we'll call them three stars here, that I got a whole bunch of rewards, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of rewards literally every single day, just by virtue of having done this now. The rewards here are absolutely spectacular, and I personally still am hunting for legendary ship fragments in this shop, to the point that, honestly, most of the time, I am out of the currency for this shop. I'm just jamming through the legendaries that you can get in here. Is that necessarily the best strategy? I don't know that it is. But I'm also okay with it for now because my assumption is that at some point, the amount of currency I'm going to get in this shop is going to outpace the rate at which I can get things in here. That's my assumption, although hopefully we'll get to that point in the not too distant future. If you have any other tips to sort of jam your way through the campaign, we actually, there were some tips I thought I was going to share today that turned out to be false, but we proved that. We proved that. Crew was new to me. But let me know down below in the comments if there are any other optimizations we should be getting a look at for this game mode. I'm pretty hyped about my ability to progress in the campaign, and most importantly, it gives you more materials so that you can go to your outfitting depot, upgrade some of these, make your way to the outfitting factory, and do some upgrades. Yeah, that seems really important. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing your nebula.